This video is about the Mount Rushmore of professional bass fishing cheaters. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate all the comments, all the new subscribers, all the new members, everybody who is interactive on the channel. I really appreciate it. But if you're not one, you should be. You should be a subscriber. All you gotta do is click that button because it's free and welcome to the team. I have always wondered who is the most recognizable professional bass fishing cheater. And in doing a little bit of research, I found several people that fit the criteria to be on the Mount Rushmore of bass cheaters. Now, some of these guys are professional anglers on a lower level. Some are just scumbags. Some are from years ago, some are more recent because we've seen more and more anglers cheat. And anglers cheat because of the money. Because when you put money into a sport where it's pay to play, anglers are going to do scummy things to win. Because not everybody is so well off that losing that little bit of money or a lot of money means a lot to them. Some anglers are desperate. And when you're desperate, you do desperate things. But who is on the Mount Rushmore of professional bass fishing cheaters? We'll have anglers that are taking fish from one place to another. We'll have people that are anglers that snag fish. We'll have anglers that put weights in fish. We'll have anglers that have altered measuring devices and much more. Some of these guys you probably know the names of, some you might not, but we'll look at several people and then we will decide, you and I will decide, who goes on that Mount Rushmore, those four heads of professional bass fishing cheaters. My first one, and I'm gonna read a lot of notes because it's in front of me, is Tony Christian, who was banned for life. He was an FLW angler in 2005, and he settled out of court with FLW, claiming what he did was legal. Now, what makes Tony different and why he said this was allowed was he had placed these rubber-made plastic bins under a dock, put them with bass in them, and he cut an X out of them. He would flip a jig in there and pull the bass out and the Rubbermaid basket would allow the bass to come out. But if the bass was trying to push its way out, it wouldn't happen. You had to pull it out hard. And he did this and won a couple tournaments. He was extremely successful. And even the co-anglers on the boat didn't know what was happening because you had to make the perfect pitch. Now these bass would be starving because they'd be sitting inside that bin for X amount of days. And out of nowhere, a jig would come out and look like something di di something for him to eat. And he would hook them, bring them out. But Tony claimed he did the, he was in the rules that he caught the fish with a hook and a rod and that he had done nothing wrong. Tony was banned for life. But does he make it on the Mount Rushmore of tournament cheaters? Next, in 2020, Robert and Cameron on Lake Powell illegally caught and took fish from one body of water to another. And this is relative to poaching. They won the tournament, got the money. I think they were, they were obviously caught, but they decided to go fish one place, catch those fish on a different day, and then bring them back in and claim that they were caught on that lake. And the funny thing about it is, is these days, with DNA testing, they can actually find out where those fish were caught. Now these guys got caught and they're, they were a two-man team. But are they on the Mount Rushmore of tournament cheaters? Next is Paul Torminen. Could be saying his name wrong. He won $70,000 in professional events. He was banned for life in the early 2000s after winning four events. Paul was caught hooking a fish tying a hook, tying a line to it, and putting it to a stump or someplace where that bass couldn't leave. Now, he was caught because another angler was out there fishing early, fish pre-fishing, and ended up snagging the braided line that was on a stump before the tournament started. Now, this angler called, and they set up a whole sting, only to find out that Paul had put those fish there, then went out there, got them back, put him in his live well, and he was caught. He was also banned for life. Now, of course, all these stories are alleged. They're only You can only get so much information off the internet. But should Paul be on 
the Mount Rushmore of bass fishing cheaters. Next, this year, from the Cal Sag Bass Anglers, we found another angler that was caught, uh, I don't know his name, Moreau is his last name, was caught doing the same thing. He had hooked some, got caught some fish earlier on a day he wasn't supposed to be out there pre-fishing, tied him up to a piling, and then went back there and did it. And he had somebody videotape the whole thing, and they had a sting on that one. Now, Moreau was caught with, caught red-handed, and, and luckily they found him, and he was uh, disqualified. But should that Mr. Moreau be put on the Mount Rushmore of tournament cheaters? One of the next anglers' name is John or Brian. John or Brian was banned for life because he, put, he weighed in a bass that he had hand poured an 11 ounce weight and stuck down the bass's gullet and it was alive. Now he built this, he did, made this weight at home and had it perfectly placed so he could just slide it in there. This is something that reminds me of the walleye cheaters. Luckily he was caught. One of the marshals or people that were running the tournament noticed it and held that bass back. Even though he thought he had won by a good disc, by a good weight differential, he didn't. And he was banned for life. And I think that says something. But should we put John on that Mount Rushmore of tournament cheaters? And last but not least, arguably one of the biggest controversies, fishing scandals we've seen in a long time. 2010, the big bass snatcher, Mike Long. Now, he wasn't a professional tournament angler, but he was out there doing something that just is a no-no. He snagged fish. He was arguably one of the most recognized anglers on the planet and known as the big bass snatcher or snagger. But Mike was caught snagging fish outside the lip. And to be more specific, Mike had caught hundreds of bass over 10 pounds, 75 over 15 pounds, and one over 20. He had 40 magazine co covers. He was, of all, of all things, I interviewed him on the radio show years and years ago. And I hate to admit this, but I bought one of his custom lures. It's a hand carved balsa, I don't even know. And it cost me a fortune, to be honest. But, and I didn't get a discount. But it was one of those it was one of those lures I thought I needed to, in my arsenal of tackle. And then all this came out. Now, the thing that really gets me about Mike is that they had a undercover sting with video that went on for two years to show that he was snagging fish. And Mike hasn't done anything since then. Now, I'm not sure he belongs as a... I, I consider him a professional fisherman. Because when you get to the level where you're going out and just fishing for a living and catching giant bass or snagging giant bass. Maybe you're not a tournament fisherman, but you're a professional fisherman. But does Mike deserve to be on the Mount Rushmore of professional cheaters? And I just want to show you, because I got up during this time. There it is. That is the Mike Long number 34 bait that he made. This, at the time when I interviewed him, this was probably 10... 11, 12 years ago. And I think this lure was probably the most expensive lure I'd ever purchased at the time. Might still be. I've never put it in the water. Don't know how it works. Just know it took forever to get to me. And then after he got to me, he got caught. But that was in, he got caught in 2010. And I think I probably interviewed Mike probably 2008 or 2009 on the radio show. So who makes your all-time Mount Rushmore of tournament cheaters. That's what I want to know. So comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I really do appreciate y'all. Thank you. Cheers and tight lines.